year live. It is 1.30 on the dot and we are here, we are live, we are in the kitchen. Uh, first off, happy Easter to everybody. Um, it is Easter weekend and I really was supposed to do this live yesterday, Good Friday, but I wasn't up to it. So here I am on Saturday. Um, I got some fish from Market Movers and the plan was to do some fish yesterday. You know the tradition of doing fish on the Good Friday. But again, I wasn't up to it. So, have the fish here. Done wash and everything. So, I had to figure out what to do with the fish. So, uh, let me just make sure everything is right with the chat. Make sure they're here, man, everything. Seems like everybody nice here and good. So when I um, posted on social media, I know I had the fish because I had fish from yesterday. Now. So I got this fish from Market Movers, Kingfish, it's Kingfish, and then clean and wash and everything. I didn't know exactly what to do but I had a couple of ideas in mind so um, I went to the market this morning well not in the market I passed by Nam Devco because I needed to get some stuff now. and I bought some seasoning to do green seasoning so I went and do some green seasoning to season the fish I have um, sive and parsley we have the um, Portuguese thyme um, some garlic pimentos, shadow benny. So one first thing I want to do is make the seasoning. Um, but I was thinking that I could do like a fish tea now. So to do the fish tea, I'm thinking about doing some um, kind of a kind of Asian twist on a fish tea. So I have like um, clove, I have star anise, I have some pieces of nutmeg here that I don't ever throw away because I know it could always um, use them. When I, when I get close down to the rasp and I don't want to damage my fingers, I just keep the little pieces. And I have some um, pimento seeds, juniper, berries, or allspice. So it's yeah, dried juniper, berries, pimento seeds, or pimento, you would call it in Jamaica, or known otherwise as allspice or some of that and I have um, some cinnamon so I figure um, for the fish tea I want to kind of incorporate them spices into it man, and do a kind of Asian inspired something I really kind of like broth with the fish because the thing is I don't eat um, I really eat the fish tail and the fish the jowls man. so what I could then do is use that to flavor up that broth or tea. People just call it fish tea. Like Jamaicans and things call it fish tea. We will call it fish broth. But I'm not calling it fish broth because I'm not doing it like a traditional fish broth now. I'm not playing like pumpkin and um, potato and that kind of thing. I want to keep it real light, like a real light kind of fish tea. So you can see how that goes. Um, but first thing I want to do is grind up seasoning to make green seasoning. Now, I do use green seasoning plenty. As a matter of fact, I don't ever buy green seasoning. Um, obviously, how I just cook on the channel, if I do in something, it's fresh herbs that flavor in the dish. But I figure, you know what, these days I'm busting some real quick pots now. And sometimes I really don't feel like, you know, sign up and cutting up a set of thing. So some green seasoning will do me good in this kind of time so um, likewise if you have stuff in your fridge like you know saive and shadow and anything and you want to extend the shelf life of it a good thing to do is to grind it up and make green seasoning before the sato wilt and thing so 
We're gonna undo that. Yeah. Hey. So I shout out people in the chat, Michelle, City Gill, Crisal, and uh, KC, Wendy, uh, Zach, Fully Tales. Yeah man. So I'm gonna um, cut up these herbs and thing. I'm gonna grind it up and we're gonna make a little green seasoning. So I'm gonna make some room here. And then we get to prepping these things. So and as always, feel free to ask any questions or make comments in the comment section and I will, you know this be a struggle, but I will try to um, address them as we go along. But all in all, it's a real struggle with um, doing this and watching the, the, um, the chat stream. Yeah, so yeah, the flavor in the bones and thing, the tail and the jowls and thing were really, um, was really seasoned whatever you're making with that fish flavor. So I want to use that because I don't really, I ain't really too fond of those parts. Now. All right, so for this, right, yeah, what I'm going to do because um, I want to actually try to plant these so it could sprout some new sides. So I'm not going to throw away this. I just want to cut off the ends and paint aside because I need to try and start back my, um, my little herb garden. So this, I'll put it in some water and then transfer it to some soil and thing and see if I get it to sprout. Stay tuned, you can see if I actually, you know, if my thumb green or if it brown, you can see. And I mean, yes, I'm gonna throw all this in the fruit processor, but we don't wanna get the fruit processor no set of unnecessary work. So I will give these a rough chop. Now using all this side, actually bought this big bundle aside with the um, intent on making the green seasoning. So, And for my green seasoning, I'm using um, Sai, Shadow Benny, Pimento, and Garlic. And no, well, Sai, Shadow Benny, Pimento, Garlic, Parsley, Thyme. I'm not going to put um, like ginger in it because the thing is, I definitely will use this to season like different pots. Huh? And um, generally speaking, um, like garlic, pimento, herbs is good base flavors. Not everything that I'm making will have ginger, so I wouldn't add ginger to my, um, to my green seasoning. If you want, you know, when you're making yours, you can do that. But uh, just to keep the flavor profile light sort of neutral, neutral, um, yeah, I'll leave all the ginger. And just check. Right now, my eye, this thing how my eyes burning, yeah. like, serious thing. My eyes are burning, but all that, is, all that in it. So let me get back to the herbs here. have to do is um, kind of grind it in batches now. I might have to do that because I figure if I try and stuff everything into the um, into the food processor that might give it a little too much work. It should be able to handle it eh? but this will be on the safe side. So I'll, I'll do the herbs first and then I'll do the pimento and the garlic after and then I'll combine everything. Um, so I have This big leaf thyme is also called podina. This big leaf 
time. This will smell real good. I had this um, green home by me and Mova. I just growing up the green over there in the yard. I know, um, like I know green season is a real, like that is real trini cooking, right? But I don't know why. I mean, back in the day I used to use it. But, like since I started, like cooking more often, and um, like just developing my recipes and things for, mm -hmm, and well for the channel in general, like I, I don't know why, but I just never really, um, I never really venture back into green seasoning. No specific reason, it's not like I had nothing against it per se. I just never use it. So I think this was a good opportunity to do something that I ain't doing in a while. I ain't cook fish in a while. So this was it. Perfect opportunity to do that. Right, put that in there. Next, we have the parsley. And the parsley, I mean, using the stems and everything. Let's kind of get a Somebody was asking on the channel about pointers for knife skills. I think there's a good a good opportunity to, to talk about that. So let's bring it back up here. Um Jed, in the kitchen, as you would know, I mean a knife is your basic tool. Now people might think that a sharp knife is more dangerous than a dull knife, and that is not true. A dull knife is more dangerous in the kitchen than a sharp knife. A dull knife could slip and cut you real bad um, if you're not careful with it. A sharp knife, once it you know sharpened well and you use it proper, will actually keep you, you know, you'll be more safe you doing that than using a dull knife. A dull knife is a no no. Do do don't mess around with a dull knife. And when it comes to cutting and um, using a knife, I learned very recently, within the last, I would say within the last five years, how long I know Ridge, probably like, a little longer than five years, but it's Ridge who actually showed me how to hold a knife proper and how to um, use a knife and, and chop things up. So I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna show you up here before we go down. So what you're doing is this, and it's take a while because there's muscle, I guess there's a bit of muscle memory involved, but once you keep at it, um, it'll become second nature. What you're doing is, wherever you're holding, you're holding it, with your, holding it down with your fingertips, but you're keeping your fingertips curled backwards, curled in, you're not, because what people would do is this. So you're gonna uncut um, parsley or whatever, and the first thing you do is do this. And what you're doing here is offering up your fingertips to get cut off. And trust me, I know all about this because I cut my hand many a time. You understand? There are many times I cut myself doing um, cooking and that kind of thing. Yeah, so in, by instinct, the first thing we just do is do this when we're holding down something and push our fingertips out. And that is literally asking the knife to cut your hand. But, so what you want to do is this instead and push your fingertips back. Now, you see in this formation here, nat naturally, when you pull your fingertips back, you're pushing this part of your hand out, and your knuckles and this part of your, your fingers. And what you're actually doing is, when, it, when you're slicing, is you're jamming or using this as a guide, this part of your hand as a guide for the knife, and they're sending the knife down this way. When you do that, I mean, your hand only coming in contact, not with the blade itself, but with the side of the blade, right? So that is a safety mechanism right there. And then, well, your fingertips pull back, so when the knife go down, 
you know that the knife is going to uncut into wherever it is you're cutting and it's not going to uncut your fingertips. That method of cutting is how I learned from Ridge and literally, I mean, it's a kind of show off thing too, right? When you're cutting and thing and you're not looking, but because your hand using the knife, this knife hand using this as a guide, you don't even need to look at what you're doing because that is, that is your feel safe here. Against down, against down, against down, against down. And your hand again, because it pulled back like this, it's not coming in contact with the actual edge of the blade, only at the side of the blade. And I mean, the side of the blade cannot cut you. So, I'm gonna scare a glimpse of what that does look like. Somebody was asking about it, so that's why I, I take any time to, to go into, into it. But let's zoom right in so you can get an idea. So instinctively, people will do this and try to cut. Again, that, mm -mm, that is unknown. What you want to do is do this, so my fingers back, and then, and then you're just moving your hand back as you go down. You understand? That is the action. Let me see how, if I can get in a little closer. Uh, a little too close there. Right. Literally, and with this now, I mean, because you're using this as a guide, you could literally cut this as thin as you want. You could get some thin slices and just kind of edge your hand back, edge your hand back to get thin slices or thicker slices, depending on where it is you're cutting. But yeah, that is... proper knife technique that I learned from Ridge Juman of Fanatic Kitchen Studio. So shout out to Ridge for um, showing me that valuable piece of information that literally changed my entire game when it comes to cooking and prepping and things like, yeah, like cooking and prepping so out. Yeah, so cooking and prepping much easier to do when you have like the proper knife skills and things take like what used to take me real long I could do in two tools now because you know, I'm doing it the way it should be done. So, let's go back here again so you can into this action. Yes, again, I know the food processor when I you know, do this, but to me, it make it's better to kind of help it along. Yeah, and a bit of better end product. So when I uh, put this across here and get a quick little blitz in the food processor. there we be we're going good we're going good so let me continue um i have some pimentos so i'm cut those up i want to give these a rough chop i 
Uh, today we're doing um, we're doing we're doing fish. We're doing some fish. I have um, for anybody who now join, anybody who now join, I have some fish here that I was supposed to cook yesterday, but I didn't feel like going live yesterday. I didn't feel for all that camera business. So we're doing it today. Um, I'm thinking maybe some fried fish, maybe or stew. But I wanna do I wanna do a fish tea for sure. Um, yeah, boy, Zach, listen, this, you ain't gonna believe this blend up here smelling real good already. Like, this smelling real good. But, continuing, we ain't done yet. We got plenty more flavor to come. Give us a rough chop. And again, as, as I was mentioning just now, with, um, Proper knife skills, prepping things. Where people say like you know prepping must take so long and thing. If your knife skills on point, you can prep in a matter of minutes. I mean you don't want to if you're now, you know, learn any technique and thing, don't go and rush it and end up in the hospital and say, but are we I are you rushing? And trying to chop like a chef and all kind of thing and then bleed me. Take your time and learn it. You know, take your time, do it slow, and eventually it'll come like second nature. If you're not accustomed to doing it, it'll take uh, some getting used to. But if you do it, practice it, every time that you cook, every time that you have something to cut up, it'll come like se second nature. This good. Yeah, we're doing, um, I'm doing a, a, a fish, a, I don't want to call it a fish broth, I don't want to call it a fish broth, because if I say fish broth, people will be expecting okra and potato and pumpkin and all them kind of things. And, well, and the D word, I'm, I'm not going to use the D word, but people, people will be expecting the D word as well. Yeah, I'm not doing a fish broth. I'm going to call it a fish tea. I call it a fish tea. We're doing fish tea. With this green seasoning, I mean, people just make it different ways. Um, some people they would add oil to it, they add vinegar, um, and that kind of thing. I think I'm gonna leave it as is. I don't think I wanna add anything. If there's anything, I might add uh, just a little bit of vinegar um, to so that it doesn't um, start to turn. Vinegar to help preserve it. So I might add some bit vinegar to, to preserve it, but uh, I might also be keeping it in the fridge. So, not might, I will be keeping it in the fridge. So that will also uh, lengthen the shelf life for this um, green seasoning. And again, if you have fresh herbs, pimentos, in, in anything in your fridge, that you're not gonna use, um, you know, like in the near future, then doing something like this is a good way to preserve your, your um, ingredients and well to get uh, more value out of your money. Because I mean, all in all things going these days, we ain't, we ain't too sure how this thing gonna go. So, I ain't know about all that, but I really watch how I spending money and you know what I buying and making sure that what I buy I get the most use out of it. 
So that's why, like, one of the reasons why I called the East, um, Pantry Essentials was kind of like a guide to show people like where you could buy to get the most bang out of your buck. And in addition to that, in addition to buying stuff and getting the most bang, uh, another thing is um, preserving its longevity. So this is all in that effort to secure all them thing, make sure that we ain't wasting money and all this kind of thing because again we know how long this thing will go for. So next thing is the garlic. Now. I want to feel like everybody know this trick for peeling garlic, but I will assume that some people might not know. So I'm gonna show you. Um, to peel garlic, place it on your cutting board. Use your, I'm gonna just cut off this top part here. I think we have some old garlic in here, but we will see. Anyway, anyway I'll go with, go with it. All right, so I want to just get us a, a smash. Then, put in a bowl. Gonna break it up a little bit. And cover it and shake it. one shake but you'll get you know you might have to shake it a couple of times but yeah that's how you peel garlic quickly right. oh what are doing I need to get these out of trouble couple of these holes inside here, so that defeating the whole purpose of what we just do. Alright, so I'm rough chop these, put all the others. The ones that still have the skin on, again, all, all you need to do is this, get a little smash, nothing much, just kind of loosen the skin. in the bowl, shake. That is it. Garlic peel. Right. This one a little stubborn, so it's always got a wooden, you know peel every single clove, but you get like a, I would say like a 90% peel rate from this uh, method, right? Between a 90 and 95% peel rate. So, let's get these things into the bin. Garlic. Actually, I'm going to show you all again with the whole knife skill thing. Um, using how precise you could get when you're using that technique. I'm going to see how far we could go. Right. So, so, I wanted to slice this clove into thin slices. Again, because of the technique where I using here as the guide, I could
to see how uh, beneficial it is to have them skills on hand with the knife. Not only to help you um, prep your stuff better, but it'll also allow you the uh, ability to get different um, slices and dices and mincing just by using this one tool, a knife. You could do so much with it with the uh, correct technique. processor and carry this over there smell this this here yeah, smelling proper this is proper things here proper things so you have um, side you have the um, big leaf thing you have Cuban oregano or Portuguese thing have a little bit of celery there parsley shadow benny pimento garlic yeah mean the game in the game. So, I'm going to use this to season fish, which is the reason why we created this. So, I'll run away a piece of pimento there. For this, just need a couple of spoons. Three, four. Yeah, that should be good there. And I will go in with some lemon juice. As well, as fish. Can't bother look for that grater now. Um, some lemon juice inside there. Eh? Must have some citrus. Watch for the seeds. You want to catch the seeds in your hand. And I think one just got away from me. that out yeah All right so we have citrus going on there nothing and we can try to get all the juice out of this lemon you know how much a lemon in the market 
is Mr. Lemon. And so I'm gonna waste no lemon. Make sure we get all them juice, all that juice out of there. Alright. Let's give my hands a quick rinse. And now some salt. Now, Jed, I mean, all you know how it is with home cooking. Some people will say use a spoon and toss this up. Jed, you're fooling yourself if you think you're going to use a spoon and get this well incorporated into the fish. To season this fish properly, or any meat for that matter, and they're going to rub it, you have to use your hands, Jed. Don't, don't, don't fool yourself, don't study people and wherever you know, complaints, I like to complain when they're watching videos and things. When you're in your house and you're seasoning meat, use your hands, season the meat, rub the meat, get intimate with the meat or the fish, whatever the case may be. And in this case, it's fish. So, yeah, don't use no spoon. Yeah, 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 wasting time there. Again, of course, you wanna be careful because I mean, fishes are bone and things sticking out, but, you need to rub it in. You need to massage that in and get all them flavor, get all that flavor, all that seasoning. Intimate with the meat. You understand? A spoon, a spoon and gain in the action. See what's going on there? So we in, we gain in to the flesh of the, the fish. A spoon and gain in the action. Forget that spoon business. That is shipping it. Use your hands. Massage it, season your thing proper. Hey, Leslie, what going on? 27th, what happening? Trinity, Trini, yeah, man. Ah, uh, thanks. So, See what happening there. You see, you see how that fish looking. I seasoning well, well seasoned fish happening here. Right. And make sure each piece get enough attention. You want to neglect none of the, none of the pieces. See what happened in there, see how the sign of it already penetrating the flesh. That is what you want. You want this fish to taste real nice and seasoned. Right. So, how the pieces here. Nice seasoning going on. I'm gonna set this aside and we have a decision to make. Now, I, I definitely, I wanna go with the, the fish tea. I wanna try that, right? So, I'm gonna use a couple pieces for that. I'm thinking as well, fry fish. Or let me know if you're feeling the fry fish. That fry fish idea. I'm gonna, if, I, if I'm doing the fry fish, I'm gonna shallow fry it because again, we, we have to be frugal in these times. I ain't gonna waste a set of oil to deep fry the fish. So I'm gonna do a shallow pan fry if I'm gonna fry the fish. Well, let, let me know in the comments if you want me to do the fry fish. But fish tea for sure. Uh, 
Alright. Alright, so the fish is there. Get my hands out of the wash. I re reset here. And the seasoning. I set this outside. Come back to that seasoning. We talk about this fish tea. How good in the comments? Well, I leave my saying fried fish. I know I leave my wood say that. I leave my saying the fried fish. So you can see. But, um, I'm going to tell you what I have in mind for this fish tea. I'll tell you what I have in mind. It's, I never make this before, but it, it, in my head, it will it, work. It, it. So, you know, um, when you buy like soup in a Chinese restaurant, depending on, on the type of soup, like a veggie soup or, or yeah like the vegetable soup and thing how it is be like a clear broth and then you will have like the vegetables and thing in it i'm thinking about doing something sooner like a kind of clear broth something um using the, the fish the fish tail and the head to season it but then using like real light veggies now so and i say light veggies well i mean veggies Veggies light, yeah. So I using like, I had, I check in the fridge to see what I had, and I have cauliflower, I have cabbage, and I have carrots. So I'm thinking, using that, like some real light um, flavors going on, um, a well seasoned broth, but I want to spice it now. So I kind of thinking of using uh, an approach like five spice, um, Chinese five spice powder but using the individual spices, flavoring the water, and then combining it with the fish and the veggies. So, again, I have um, nutmeg and pimento or juniper berries. I have Star anise. So I have star anise here. I have clove. I'm sure the pieces of nutmeg I have there again. Some inner nutmeg. Pimento. Juniper berries or pimento, allspice. And I have cinnamon and ginger. Now, if you know about like chai, a lot of these spices that I have here are actually is the base of chai. Like if you're making a chai, you would definitely have um, some ginger, uh, cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, um, cardamom as well, and some other spices. So, think about that flavor profile. Now I know, yes, this is quarantine cooking, and I really supposed to be, in theory, supposed to be showing you um, how to prepare meals with things that they have in your pantry. And yes, I know a lot of people don't have star anise, and uh, cinnamon, whole cinnamon, and that kind of thing in the pantry. I know that, all right? But I have it, and I wanted to use it, and I cook any fish. So what you could do is, if you have the fish, and you want to do this, um, if you have the spices, you could use them. If you have different spices, you could experiment with the different spices. If you have no spices at all, you could leave the spices out and just use like ginger, and um, garlic and onion and that kind of thing. Or, if you want to, if you have um, five spice powder, you could use the powder, 
but again I use any cool spices because I want the broth to be clear I don't want it to be cloudy and if you put um, five spice powder in that it will be cloudy so um, that's the reason why I'm not using the five spice powder so I have a little pan here pot small pot I'm gonna put some water on and I'm gonna put the spices in the water to flavor the water or should I I think should I saute the I probably should saute the fish with some aromatics add the spices then add the water and just let it simmer for a while yeah I'm gonna do that yeah instead of adding the water first I figure I'm gonna break down the aromatics with the fish um, so that is well, you already have garlic in the um, green season but I use a little bit of garlic ginger onion fish and then the spices and then add some water to that so yeah Again, I never make this before. I tell you, I had it in my head, the idea in my head now. So, I just kind of take it through as it go along. If it tastes good, I go write up a recipe and post it on the website. It should taste good. It should. So, I'm going to cut some ginger here. How are you going in the chat? Fry stew. Hey, well, let me tell you something about fry stew, right? Growing up, I had I never knew about fry stew. Like, I only knew that was a thing probably like five years now. I had no idea people used to fry fish and then stew it. Now, to each his own, right? To each his own. I'm going to preface what I'm going to say next by saying to each his own. But, fish is a very delicate thing fish don't take long to cook at all if you're cooking fish for more than 10 minutes you're overcooking fish right i don't understand how you just fry fish and then put it to cook again in stew i don't understand it unless you're par frying the fish unless you're just frying it so that it gets uh crispiness on the outside but then again even if you crisp it on the outside when you put it in the stew it's not gonna be crispy again so I do not understand why people just fry stew I don't understand it one it overcooking the fish and two whatever benefits you're getting from frying it you're losing it when you stew it so I, I don't know maybe all you can explain to me in the comments why people just fry stew but I didn't grow up with that at all um, the way I grew up knowing stew fish is in the pot onion garlic um, maybe some carrots tomato coconut milk that kind of thing that's how I know stew fish raw fish I did never know people used to fry the fish and then stew it again so you know you learn something new every day and apparently it's a very popular thing I didn't but I guess it just goes to show you, I mean, you grew up in Trinidad, Trinidad is a very small place, but people just prepare things differently. So, there you go. Alright, back to this. Um, I'm going to use some ginger and I already scrubbed this ginger and I'm not taking off the skin because it has a lot of flavor in the skin as well. So, I'm leaving the skin on.
and people might say there's too much ginger, but I really like ginger and again going for you know kind of Asian flavors so heavy on the ginger right the ginger one side I will use one clove of garlic I, I mean again this is just to kind of add some extra flavor but we already have um, garlic going on in the green seasoning so you don't need to go heavy on the garlic again i mean you could if you wanted to i am from the school of you never have too much garlic but uh i'm just going with one for now spiciness in this so I'm gonna use a little bit of um, scotch bonnet I'm just gonna use just a little piece yeah not too much I want it too crazy on the on the Scoville scale so a little bit of scotch bonnet there Right, um, onion, yeah, we might add some, do I want to put onion right? Should I, should I? Yeah, you put some on. I would say like half of this onion. So half of a small onion. You know how this is gonna get shallot too. Is that onion or shallot? Shallot. Hmm? Fancy. Some market movers. Look at thing. Alright. And then just clean it. Ten slices. I think we have everything we need here. I have the aromatics, we have the spices, um, we have the pot. I think this pot might be too small though. I might need something bigger. Let me use um, let me use this other pot here. a whole set and I'm making to feed the marish and parish but at the same time I want a comfortable working environment so I think this size would be ideal Let's see or you could see inside there I think so we should be able to see inside there all right so light it up some of these, these spices. I should bring out some of the flavor and the spices. Um, using two star anise. One, two, three. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna get these a little smash before I put them in the pot. I'm just gonna smash these a little bit. 
with uh, the knife. Yeah, better release uh, more flavor. Alright. So, it will smash. Nice, it will come like there. Some clove. Got the nutmeg. Just gonna break this up a little bit. You know, just use the knife and just kind of smash it. Cinnamon. And you will notice when it's ready, when you start to smell the um, spices, they'll become real fragrant. And you know, all right, start to release the oils and it'll start to pop too. Almost like if you're toasting jeera, it's the same, same uh, principle. So, we need some oil in there as well. I think I wanna use a combination of butter and olive oil. So I feel I want like a tablespoon of butter and then some olive oil as well. I think that what I, the, the butter does allow um, the flavor to build into the fat and I learned that from the fish broth video that we did on Simply Local. I actually learned that tip, that was a good tip, I using um, butter with oil to help um, add the flavors permeate in the dish. Now. So that's a good tip for you. And that was um, Quincy. He's a chef at Crave. Quincy um, did that episode with Rennie and showed us that tip. And that was a real good tip. So, putting the butter in, putting the oil. And all in, not seeing into the pot. And let's see if I can get. Let's see if I can get a shot of the inside the pot. Smell this, I ain't gonna lie. This smelling real good. This smelling good. Mm pieces of fish that will not flavor the broth for the tea. So the tail and the jowls.
add a cup of water. And we kind of build in the flavors gradually. Now. So I'm not going to add all the water one time. I want this to uh, really kind of get real concentrated. But it's going to form the base of everything now. So. I want the fish to sort of break down inside of there. So. There we go. Going good. Mm. Check the chat. Yeah, Ginger Glow, we, we, we saying something here, you know? we saying something here. Blessed and highly favored. There's, there's no hurry pot, you know? we can't hurry the pot. There's no hurry pot we doing here. And I am, um, it's not something I make before. I experiment in here, so I had to take my time with it because I, Triggering out as I go along. My taste here. Mm hmm. Coming to come. The fish already sat to impart real flavor. I want this to kind of break down and real fill a nice flavorful broth right. so now I'm gonna season it a little salt So I'm thinking how I'm going to approach this is I'm not going to dump everything into the, the broth when this finish um, do what I need to do. What I want to do is cook, the, do a quick stir fry on the veggies separate and then add the broth to it now. I might even strain this just to, for like aesthetic purposes. Um, kind of strain it out so that it remain clearish and then you get the flavor coming through you get the um, Nice veggies, you know Lightly cooking and cooking and cooking them veggies for long at all And that's the idea I have in my head Something real um, I won't I won't say subtle but the approach the approach is we fit at least with the veggies it's like a subtle approach where you want the veggies to still have, you know, a bit of firmness to it, a bite. Trying to get, keep it as fresh as possible. That way we get, you know, all the nutrients and things out of the veggies. We ain't overcooking them and cooking out all the, all the goodness. Right. So I will let us go for a while. The next scene is the fried fish. 
We're doing the fried fish. Yeah, feel we, let, me, let me do the fried fish. Yeah, we can't, we can't already pot. Because I experiment in tuna. So, we want to make sure we have a good outcome. And don't worry, um, bless and highly favored. I will post a written recipe on the website when this is done. So, don't worry about not catching the whole process. You can always uh, go on the website afterwards. Well, I guess by Monday, I'll have it done. I'll do a full written recipe. All right. So let me, let me, let me see about this fried fish business now. As you can see, still going good here. I think just now, when the fish start to break down and thing, I'll start to add more water. I ain't ready for the more water. I want to give it a couple of minutes. Again, I really want the fish to break down in there and impart more flavor into the mixture. Squeeze our lemon juice. Nice. Thing is, I ain't even getting no, no heat from the pepper there. I almost needed more pepper because I. To be honest, I'm not tasting no kind of heat at all. But you know what? I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it as it. Pepper is something you could always add. You can't take all pepper. Taste again. Yeah, man. Right, at this stage I figure, now we'll add more water. fish time. I prefer the fish. I know usually people use flour but um, I'm not using flour. I have this crispy deep fry butter or you could buy corn starch or potato starch which will give you a much crispier um, fry fish than flour. So uh, this and I mean, you can get this on almost any grocery. It might, if you're not accustomed to it, it might seem like it's a specialty item, but it really isn't. It very, it's a very common thing. So, yeah, use this, and you'll get a crispier finish to your uh, fried, wherever it is, chicken, fish, even veggies. You can use this for um, deep fry. So, um, prep some slices of fish and again I tell you I do not shallow fry because I really don't have a set of um, oil I mean I have but I don't want to waste the oil so I do not shallow fry instead of deep fry all right so let me move this pot over to our next burner And 
let's go for the fry fish action. Some oil inside here. And it's small pieces of fish, so it's not gonna take a lot of um, oil to shallow fry. I don't have any large pieces, as you saw. Some small pieces, pretty small, so. I don't need like a whole set of oil to fry it. some uh, this more garlic I don't think I need all of this because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna um, do all this one time so I'll just do a few pieces so I think I wanna flavor this a little bit so, a little bit of dry thyme. Our garlic powder. Cayenne pepper. Black pepper. Some pepper cheese. No I'm joking. Salt. And the salt. Oil can make it ready. Meet up. Drill for frying, you gotta make sure your station set up now. 
and ready for frying. All right, so I do this. Of course, you want to make sure you get mostly liquid off of the fish. So it's kind of make sure it drip off. You want to coat it one side, coat the next side. And then into your oil. I got this um, fry for like three to five minutes. On one side, three minutes on one side, three minutes on the next side. And that should be good. Between three to five on each side, it should be alright. I mean, if you want, you could do the bathing method as well. I don't know if all I was here for the, um, for the bacon shark episode, but a good um, tip for when you're frying, especially when you're shallow frying, is um, if you want the top side to cook as well, when you're shallow frying, you just kind of use a spoon or something and you just kind of bead here. Show sure your chicken or whatever the case may be. Now we while the bottom cooking, the top cooking as well. And this is a good way to fry something and not use a whole set of oil to accomplish it. Now. Again, we're trying to be frugal here. Uh, so we in about taking a whole bottle of oil just to fry some pieces of fish. So, with this technique, and I mean, if, you, if I come in, I'll close, so you'll be able to see. Just adjust. So as you can see, the top is cooking along while the bottom is cooking. Then get ready to flip. So I use a fork. Just flip it over. Alright. I'm gonna give it about three minutes on this side. on my fry. One, two. My fry three more pieces. Yeah. Fry three more pieces. Yeah, corn I uh, yeah cornmeal is actually a real good um addition as well. Cornmeal is give a nice crispiness. Yes it Actually, cornmeal and flour mixture as a um, uh, dredging uh, mixture for frying stuff that we real good. I do a, a cornmeal dredge with um, flour for chicken already and come out real nice. See what we're going on across here. 
Ema, looking good there. is it will burn. You know that. So I'll let the oil come down a little bit and then I'll pay back on the flame. So that's a good tip. When um if you're frying and you see your oil start to smoke, you want to remove it from the heat and let it, um let the oil temperature come down a little bit because you'll get burning going on before your meat or whatever it is you're frying actually start to cook. You don't want that. You want a nice golden fry where everything cooking proper. Alright. Think you're alright there. from here, not towards you, are we? No, beating time, come in front for your blessings. the green season and anything going on there. So you know this gonna be a flavorful fish. Here. This is no you know ain't no bland fish happening here. Flavors.
if um, you join the light late, what I'm doing is uh, I had this fish, I was supposed to cook it yesterday, but I didn't. So I decided to make it today. And yeah, let's do another fry fish. I do another fish tea. I had the broth with the fish tea going here in the corner here. The fish breaking down nice. Right, this is just a alani up, basically. It's a little extra something with the fried fish. But the fish tea is what I really wanted to try. So, right. Well, on our way there. Nice. So, fry fish going on. Fish tea happening in the corner. Don't know. Saturday looking good. Saturday looking good. A proper Saturday business here. Watch it. All here, all here, the crisp on this fish. Oh, you can hear because all that frying thing going on here, but trust me, that, that is real crisp going on there. Real crisp. Real crisps. Crispiness. Real crispiness. We looking good. I kind of want a taste piece, but I'm going to exercise some self-control. Back on this spot here. Right. See what's going on. Is a nice, nice fry fish. If I do say so myself. If I do say so myself. Alright, so you know what? For the fish tea, I have, I will keep some pieces for the fish tea, right? So one, two, three, four. I think I could fry two more pieces here. Two more. And as you can see, fish don't take long to fry at all. Fish is a, is a quick thing. In tutus, the fish don't fry. Fish don't take a no big length of time to fry. to go in mm. 
Thanks. Beat in time and bless the fish. Some hot oil. Not the type of blessings you would want or anyone would want, but for this fish, it's quite alright. And yeah, we we see meant to be in a gear. The thing is, frying anything for me, there's always be, I, I really don't like frying stuff, you know, there's be too messy, shit. Like, I want to clean up here, so I do after you fry something. I, I, I get why people much prefer to just go out and just buy some kind of fried thing, you know. Whether it be fried chicken, you know, fried fish, shark, whatever the case may be. Frying is... It's always seem like a real kind of labor intensive thing. Whether it is in the process or in the cleaning up. So yeah, I, I do really enjoy frying. If I had to be perfectly honest. Mm. Don't know, nah, I didn't use flour. Um, so, to, Fry, I use um, this deep fry batter, which is to be either cornstarch or potato starch. And you can find this in almost any grocery, you'll find it um, where you would find like the Asian section, um, noodles and that kind of thing, soy sauce and that kind of thing. You would find cornstarch or um, potato starch. And that better, that will give you a crispier finish for wherever it is your friend. So check it out. Yes. As you can see. Perfect for frying stuff. Alright. Flip these. Alright. So the next thing I have to figure out now is the other part of the fish tea where I wanna kinda cut up the veggies and then do a real light, what I mean light, like a real light saute on it and then add the broth now. I think I wanna add some pieces of fish tater as well. So, and this fish I figure will cook real fast. So do I cook the fish in the broth? But if I try to cook the fish in the broth then the veggies will take too long to cook. We'll be cooking for too long. I don't want the veggies to cook long at all. So it's either put the fish in with this now and let it cook. And then take it out, drain the liquid, cook the veggies, pour the liquid over the veggies and then place the fish. Seeming a little, you know, a little com cumbersome is, 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 is you know, a bit of a process, but it's, it's the, the finish I'm going for, I think it's necessary. I think it, it's totally necessary for the finish that I have in mind. So I feel what I could do is, when you finish with this fish, I bring the broth back here, cook this rest of fish in the broth, and then you'll move on. So we will see. So we will see. Let's, let's see. We're almost done with this um, fried fish. So a couple more seconds and we'll be good to go. We're looking good on the fried fish front here. Or the fried fish front here. We're looking good.
last bit out. It's the last bit of fish here. The train. Crips. Right. What shall we? What shall we have in here? Fried fish. Boom. See it. Looking good. Looking proper. So, fish done. Let us move on. the broth so back here move this back to this corner turn this off right so I'm gonna let you see what's going on here now you can see this going for a while Cooking away. And at this point, you know, you see the fish breaking up and that kind of thing. You know it. it. You know it properly. You know it's real flavor going on. I'm gonna give it a taste. Make sure we good for salt and thing. Mm hmm. Good. Right. Now, again, remember what I say, I want to go for a clear broth here. But right now, I don't know if you can see inside, let me come a little closer. So we still have like some straining and things to do with the, with the broth now. I figure I could cook the fish now, which is these pieces here. Cook it here and then remove it strain the broth to add to the veggies so i want to do that uh when i add some more water so right now thus far we have three cups of water i think i want to add two more cups but i'm gonna add this fish first so we're going in with these pieces here and we want these pieces to cook and of course we're not gonna waste this, we want all this is flavor, so we can put all this flavor into broth. And because I want enough broth to um, put, put with the veggies, I want to, because I still have to um, strain this, I want to add this a little more water. And at this point, um, you want to be gentle with the fish because you don't want the fish to break up now. It's okay if the tail and thing break up, but these pieces I want to try and keep them whole now. So at this point, I'll be a little gentle with it. veg as I say I have some veggies there I'm gonna use not again it's, it's a light thing eh? it's a real kind of light scene we're going for so I'm gonna just prep some carrots some cauliflower and some 
cabbage. Carrots, I want to kind of cut them on the bias. So I want some biggish pieces. So I'm cutting them. Again, we're going to you wanted to have like I would say maximum like 45 seconds cooking time. I'm not gonna cook this for very long at all. Right? So, because in this thin, I think um, the fish shouldn't be long again for the fish to finish cook. As you can see, fish almost done already. As I said, fish is something it don't take long to cook at all. So. I know we, to me, I think we tend to overcook fish here. I'm gonna let that go for a couple more minutes. Okay. Back to this. My carrots. Cabbage. And I even gonna cabbage that I kinda wanna leave in biggest pieces, the leaves. So I'm not gonna um, real chop it fine or like that. I want everything to be kinda similar size. So put that together
Monat eller noget Right. So we got veggies prepped. I think the fish finished cooked, so I'm gonna remove it from the bowl. So I remove any food. This is a fish broth. Now what I want to do is strain this, turn that off, we need to strain this into a bowl. So we strain all the spices and the aromatics and that kind of thing. Out from it, I'm drinking because every bit of this broth counts. Right. So I'm going to tell the idea that I have now. I'm going to explain it. So, coming back here. So this is the idea I have. We are the veggies. The veggies are not going to take long to cook. As I say, 45 seconds, high heat, boom, done. After the, when the veggies are done, you take them out, put them in a bowl, pour the broth, put the, the fish, Pour the broth over it, that's a done deal. And I think I probably need some fresh herbs too. I'll put some fresh side too. So let me see, let me see how that going. And I'll try it and I will let you know for real, for real, if it tastes in it. Let me see. And let's have um, some fresh side thing here. I just want a little bit to top off the dish when I'm done. So let's prep that one time because the, the rest of this could not go like quick speed. So we had a veg. We had the fish, we had the broth. Let me, let me get this thing moving. I'm a pan here. Gonna put this on high heat. Alright. Get this hot, as hot as possible. That's how that's possible, I like. I think it's gonna be that hot. Just pot enough. Alright. Um, oil. I'll 
gonna go with, with this. I shall use olive oil. Just a little bit here. Alright. Yeah, the water in was drying out, uh, Karen. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't want it to dry out. So, um, I want as much broth as possible. So, this is broth that remained it here. And as soon as this guy is almost at smoking point, I'm gonna go in with the veggies. And I'm not playing all this. So basically how this how, how I seeing it in my head is that it will be almost like you're doing it to, to serve now. As you do it one time, it's to serve one time. It's plate out and serve kind of vibes now. So, I have the carrots and thing here. I'm going to bowl too. fish like so on top I'm gonna put some of the broth and then finish it off with some fresh herbs And yeah, this, this is what I had in my mind. This is the kind of thing I had in my mind. A clear, clear well, clear-ish broth. It didn't clear, clear. But a clear-ish broth, some lightly cooked veggies with some fish. This is what I had in my mind. So, I mean, to achieve it, you probably have other ways to achieve it. But in my mind, the way to achieve it was to um, start with the fish build the flavors in the broth because the broth is what we're going to carry most of the flavor start off with the pieces the pieces that i don't usually eat which was the tail and the uh the head let that build the fish flavor into the broth um with the spices and the aromatics let that simmer for a while come together then the fish are we actually use anything because fish don't take long to cook especially these pieces like um these are steaks cook that after in the broth, remove it from the broth, strain it, and then um, with the veggies, 45 sec 30 to 45 seconds on high heat, just a little bit of salt is all you need, and then into a bowl with the broth, with the fish, with the broth, fresh herbs, and I think that is it. And I think this, this is what I had in my mind in terms of aesthetics, like this I want it to look like, as you can see. But, with all that talk, the proof is in the pudding. So, I'm gonna try it. Some spoon here. 
try it and see. Need for this. Let's level this yoda looking. Nice. Mm hmm So I really need, don't need, but even like a fresh squeeze of lemon over this now. And one other thing. And some peppers here. This, this is not Goya peppers. This is literally some peppers I put in um, vinegar and all spice berries. If you see, you see in the all spice at the bottom there. Yeah, there's some chilies that I bought a while ago. I feel I'm gonna top it with some of these chilies here. Well, some of this chili. Because, like I said, I put a little bit of the scotch bonnet, but I really not getting no spice in it. So, watch that. What's going on there? Yeah. All right. I feel that going on. Put it over the top. That is it. That is it. The old extra vinegar. Mm -hmm. Spicy. There's some pepper. Try it. This tastes good. This tastes good. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't lying to all it. It tastes good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen. It's a bit of a process, but I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. It's not, it's not something, it's not an everyday thing. It's not something you're gonna make everyday. But we say, you're doing all, all dinner vibes now, nah? and you want to impress with something a little different, a little twist. I think this, I think if you, you know, you give somebody this as a starter, you know, as an appetizer to, to break the gas and thing now, nah? and to open up the appetite, I think you give somebody a nice bowl of this, they will appreciate it. I, I feel so. This is a, is a nice meal. It's a different twist or different take on a fish broth or a fish tea. So yeah, I think we not get here. We have this here. Still I'm a fried fish. I ain't, I ain't forget about that. Fried fish in the corner there, but I will deal with that in a time. What about this right now? Um, yeah, so we, we went pretty good here. Good outcome. I will go over the steps and I will post a recipe to the website. Um, as usual, thank you for joining me. Thank you for Everybody who came and stayed, Crystal, Bless and Highly Favored, Karen, uh, Kyle, what going on? Kyle, Kyle, this, this is not the same Kyle that get loud up from the gill on um, social media. Kyle, that is you. Kyle, where you do the gill, boy? Kyle, Kyle, you break the gill heart. Kyle, what going on? Talk to me. But yeah, um, Donald, Crystal, uh, everybody who in the chat now, I mean, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe and every subscription counts. And um, yeah, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for uh, joining me on this episode of Quarantine Cooking's Stay Home With Me sessions. And yeah, I will be posting the recipe on the website, eataffoodtt.com, so look out for that. I will post it on social media. I would say definitely by Monday for the latest, it will be on the site, so um, look out for that. And thanks again for keeping my company. Always a pleasure. Always good vibes. Michelle, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for joining me. Everybody in the chat. Blessings. Alima. Nice. So, again, please subscribe to the channel, follow us across social media. We are Eater Food on Twitter, Eater Food on Facebook, Eater Food TT on Instagram, 
eatafoodtt.com is the website and of course eat a food right here on YouTube please subscribe again every subscription counts and I will see you soon we have a new episode of simply local going live on the YouTube channel this Wednesday so look out for that that will be dropping this Wednesday I'm not going to tell you what going to come stay tuned and you will see it's a real nice uh, a real nice recipe coming so look out for that and yeah thanks again for joining me and all you be safe uh, practice your social distancing and your quarantine and your lockdown and uh, take it easy you go pick up later